Good morning, it is filled to the brim and it is Thursday, February 11th and the Holy Spirit is speaking to us about agreement, the power of agreement with Him. Now the Lord really stirred my heart actually after yesterday's filled to the brim because I talked about the surrendering of ourselves but today I want to really hone in on one aspect that was brought up yesterday and that is the surrendering of our senses, our five senses. You know, we don't even realize how we serve those senses so many times. Now, of course the Lord created us and those five senses are a part of how He created us, but we need to recognize that as a result of sin, those senses were altered and even Adam and Eve, after they sinned, I mean, their eyes were open. It talks about that. And the truth is, even the enemy, how he tempted Eve was through her senses. So the Lord has redeemed our senses through the cross and through the power of the Holy Spirit. But we do face the fact that our senses want to dictate to us and our senses want us to serve them. And the truth is, we cannot be in agreement with the Lord and serve our senses. We have to surrender our senses to the Lord. You know, that is part of being crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The life that I now live in the body, I live by faith. I am not controlled by my flesh and I'm not controlled by my senses. So there is an aspect of surrender that we need to have of our senses to the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Lord does use them. Yes, the Lord did create our senses as part of who we are holistically. But we have to surrender our senses to the Lord. Actually, Jesus did that in the desert. Like I said, he never had sinful flesh, but he did have flesh. And so part of his desert experience was surrendering those senses to the Spirit of God. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says this, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Our true and proper worship is a, being a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. See, the world wants us to be ruled by our senses. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let the Lord speak to you. Let your mind be the mind of Christ. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. You will be able to be in agreement with God's will. So the fact is this. We have to surrender our senses in order to be in agreement with the will of the Lord. Now one scripture that I really want to emphasize is what Paul writes in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14. He says this, But solid food is for the mature. Who, pra who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Let me read that one more time. But solid food is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. See, he's saying that is part of our journey into spiritual maturity is to have our senses trained. In other words, we have reigned in those senses. They're in submission to the Holy Spirit. And we don't let our senses dictate to us. You know, part of the concept of idolatry or idols have to do with wanting or needing our senses to engage with something. So I can need to see it, I need to feel it, I need to touch it. That is from the flesh. See, we serve an unseen God. We serve an invisible God. And that's on purpose because we don't have to see God physically in order to worship Him. You know, John 4, 24 says this, God is spirit and His worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. It's very important that 
we don't, even in our uh, spiritual walk, let our, our uh, senses rule us. I, I think one of the, the dangers uh, right now in our culture is uh, the worship culture that we have, that we can be in a musical worship experience and have senses engaged, which is good to have our senses engaged, but not be surrendered. So in other words, we have this emotional, sensory experience, but we have not worshipped Him in spirit and in truth. And we leave that worship experience as an experience rather than as transformation, as surrender, as a maturing aspect to us. Listen, let us be aware of that. We worship Him in spirit and in truth. And just like Romans said to us, we offer our bodies as living sacrifices unto the Lord, which is our reasonable act of service to Him. That is, we surrender those senses to the Lord. I just want to say, let us be aware of needing some sort of sensory experience, but not wanting to change our flesh, not sacrificing our flesh, our senses. We have to surrender them to the Lord. There is so much more than I want to say, and I'll probably do a part two on this due to time. But scripture speaks to us about our senses, he, and it says this, 1 John 2, 15 and 17. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. He says, take captive those senses, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, because it's not pleasing to the Father. This is what the world wants you to serve. The world wants you to serve your senses. And when we serve our senses, it pulls us out of agreement with the Lord. The Lord cannot be pleased with that in our lives. He's challenging us to surrender our senses. Much more to say about this, but I want you to pray about it. Have you been serving your senses? Have you even interpreted what your senses are saying to you as the Spirit of God rather than surrendering those senses to the Lord and saying, Lord, uh, my flesh must die in this area so that you can speak to me with your truth, which will set me free. God bless you. Pray about this word.